code hoisting okay now code hoisting essentially is saying that this is related to the uh, example that we saw earlier with the 2 into pi into fc into i right in this case i mean let's start with the simple example i'm just basically doing y of i equal to a plus b right so it looks as though i will need to do this addition 100 times right is that really relevant no because i could have basically taken this t equal to a plus b and put it outside the loop right so i could have written this as t is equal to a plus b and then for i is equal to 0 to 100 y of i equals t okay i still need to do this because i need to initialize the y array right so the for loop is still required i can't avoid that all that we are saying is you don't need to do the addition inside the for loop okay so you know you would have noticed that the 2 into pi into fc into uh, 2 into pi into fc over here for example could also have been done the same way right i could have taken the 2 into pi into fc and made that one constant and taken it outside the loop because i know that fc is not changing inside the loop what is changing only i okay so if i declare some k is equal to 2 into pi into fc move it outside the loop inside the loop i do some k1 is equal to k into i right and then use k1 for the cos and sin okay i have basically further reduced the total number of multiplications to be done okay so this code hoisting all that it's saying is you have a loop where some operation happens multiple times is there some part of that operation that could have been taken outside the loop thereby reducing the computation that is actually being performed inside okay now if you recall the example of the diffic uh, differential equation uh, hls that i showed you right you would remember that there was one computation some c1 into a dx or something like that which the compiler actually pulled out of the loop okay it was basically doing code hoisting okay now strength reduction okay this essentially what it says is are there better ways to perform certain kinds of computations okay now what do i mean by a better way a uh, multiplication right usually i mean in modern x86 processors and so on there will always be one hardware multiplier present and in fact usually that is optimized to the point where it can do arbitrary you know 32 cross 32 or sometimes even 64 cross 64 multiplications within a single clock cycle okay but on the other hand especially for microcontrollers or even in the case of hardware right putting a multiplier in there right will actually be quite expensive in which case what we could actually say is you know why would i do y is equal to uh, and x is equal to y into 4 right can i do this in a better way i could basically have written this as y left shift by 2 okay now whether i am implementing pure hardware or let's say that i'm doing this inside a microcontroller i will usually find that y left shifted by 2 is more efficient than y multiplied by 4 because y multiplied by 4 needs me to actually use the multiplication unit whereas y left shift by 2 in hardware is actually free right it's just basically a wiring problem right you just need to sort of realign the bits that you are using right similarly t by 8 assuming that i am doing only integer division would be t right right shift by 3 okay once again no multiplication or division involved division is even more expensive than multiplication right so this is what we are saying we are basically talking about the strength of certain operations operations that are hard to implement or take time can now be replaced by something simpler okay now what about the third case q into 15 right now it's no longer just one left shift right but what i can do is that i can still rewrite this as q into 16 minus 1 right which is basically equal to q left shift by 4 minus q okay so once again i have eliminated the uh, multiplication operation or rather i have replaced it with an addition or a subtraction in this case a shift and a subtraction okay is this actually better off right 
may or may not be because in practice what you might find is that especially on a processor like the x86 the multiplication is just one instruction it finishes in one clock cycle whereas left shift by 4 will be one instruction right and subtraction will be another instruction so you might actually end up making things worse okay so this strength reduction is an example where you have to be careful you have to know what architecture you are targeting if it is hardware then this q left shift by 4 minus q is definitely going to be better than putting in a hardware multiplier which you can multiply by 15 right on the other hand if it's x86 which has a hardware multiplier then you might find that just you know using the multiplication operation is better okay function inlining right essentially says that let's say i have a function f which has a very simple kind of computation it's basically doing x, x square right so it basically returns x into x okay and then function g uses function f internally okay what can i do with this i could just as well have replaced it by a single int g which just basically does return x into x plus y into y okay so basically what i have done is i have inlined the function f now why is this relevant because if you look at how a function gets called in software right i'm still talking about software over here a function call would basically involve saving the present state of g right putting the variable x onto the stack for a new function right saving the stack pointer etc etc and then jumping to the location for f okay at least some three or four clock cycles after that i perform one instruction you now x into x is just basically one multiply operation and then i have return what do i do on return i need to pop the stack pointer i need to get back to the place where i came from i need to restore the variables that were saved as a result of doing this right lots of work for something which was actually very trivial right similarly in the context of hardware this is the equivalent of sort of saying that i mean what happens in hardware usually each function will get translated into one module okay and in turn that would typically mean that you know each module has its own sort of handshaking signals right so there is a start signal there is some finite state machine inside the module a done signal which says when the module has completed and so on right so if i have all of those signals then there is considerably more overhead than just removing it and saying okay you know i can replace it with x into x directly over here okay the problem with function inlining right is that potentially it can result in larger code than you started with okay and the reason i say that is let's say that i mean i over here i've given you an example where g calls f twice right but let's say that g called f you know uh, 10 times and more importantly that f itself was a little bit more than just one line of code okay f was maybe two or three lines okay now suddenly what happens is in g every time that f is called it has to be replaced with three lines of code and there are 10 such occurrences you suddenly have 30 lines of code where previously it was just you know 10 function calls okay so in such a situation the code size might increase can it still result in a decrease in running time possibly because you know it might turn out that even those three lines of code are things that can are more efficient than having the function call overhead Okay. So, function inlining can potentially result in an increase in the code size. 